CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... In 1917, the Russian Revolution was unleashed. Finally, it engulfed Mother Russia and stained half a continent red. But whatever changes it wrought, it changed little in the Russian soul itself. The people under the star were very like the people today. As Gogol himself said, all the civil servants can talk about is their government office. Everything seems to have been crushed under a great weight. Everyone is drowned by the trivial, meaningless labors at which he must spend his useless life. This is the story of that old Russia. And you, an officer of the law, are trying to tell me this specter of a man tried to snatch the coat off your back. That's how it seemed, General. You see, just at that moment, I was taking a pinch of snuff and... Uh, and uh, in the middle of it, I had to sneeze. And after I did, he was gone. He just up and disappeared. Our mystery drama, The Overcoat, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Hans Conried. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and by General Electric Citizen Band Radio. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Today it is called Leningrad. Then it was known as St. Petersburg, a city that Pushkin called a graveyard of dreams, that Gogol described as an amazingly quiet place. The people seem more dead than alive. And that obsessed all later Russian writers with its intangibility, its mists, and its white nights. A mystifying and mysterious city where the individual loses all identity. And in this city lived, or should we say existed, a man whose name... No. Let his story be told by the people who knew him. You never heard of Akaki Akakievich? Then you don't know Petersburg. But then, of course, even if you had heard of him, you didn't know him, as I did. He boarded with me, how many, 20 years? Something like that. It's hard to remember. He was shortish, one would say. Rather pockmarked and with reddish hair. He had a small, bald patch in front and wrinkles on his cheeks. But he always paid promptly, even if all he had was the garret room. Good evening, Madame Bushka. Oh, good evening, Counselor. Uh, it is cold out? Oh, yes, I think. I didn't notice. Oh, your coat needs mending. Oh, where? There's a tear under the arm, big enough to stick your head oh, through. so there is. I must do something about it. I have some thread. I can patch it for you. Yeah, so much trouble. And I have, as you see, important work to do. I see by all your papers. Uh, you must watch your health. Look, I have some tea in the samovar. You could have a glass while you wait for me to fix that rent. Rent? Oh, that reminds me. Today, I have it for you. Oh, so? Well, come in a moment. I'll give you a receipt. Oh, I wouldn't want to take advantage. Having <laughs> hospitality, the, the receipt I could get in the morning. And your coat? Well, I, I could take it to Petrovich the tailor. Oh, a robber. Yeah. One small favor I couldn't do for you. Yeah, was... I, I have no way of returning oh, it. Did I ask? Come in then. And take off your coat. I look at him as I sew this old bunch of rags he calls a coat, and I wonder. He has taken the tea, but he is in an agony of embarrassment because I've taken him out of his world. Oh, you're not drinking your tea. Oh, oh yes. Well, it was just 
a little hard. Oh, and maybe not enough sugar. Oh, oh yes, enough. You know, more than enough. I'm not, I'm not used to sugar. As you will. Well, you always bring so much work home. Well, there's always so much to be done. Oh. What is it you do at the department? I copy. Oh? Copy what? Why, well, all kinds of documents. Such as? I wouldn't have the faintest notion. There isn't time to read them, you see. Oh, I see. Uh, you are from the Ukraine, Counselor? Yes. Basmashkin. That's why I asked. Well, it means well, a uh, Basmaki is a shoe. I know. You are not from the Ukraine? No. From Georgia. Oh. Was your father a shoemaker? Oh, no. Why? Because of your name. Oh, no, that's... Was because my father and my grandfather went around in boots and they had them sold just three times a year. But you don't have boots. Oh, no, no, I, I have shoes. But then everyone calls me Akaki, Akaki Akievich. Yes, I know. You are thinking that is a strange name. I didn't say so. Oh, well, some people even say far-fetched, but really I could have been called anything else. You see, here is how it was. If you want to hear. Oh, I might as well. I haven't finished your coat yet. Uh, very well. You see, I was born on March the 22nd at night, if my memory serves me right. <laughs> that would be more up to your mother's memory, perhaps. Oh, you could be right. She was the wife of a civil servant, you see. Ah. Uh, my, my father was in the civil service. I should think so. Uh, my mother was offered a choice of three names. Uh, Mokia, Sosia... After the martyr. Oh, no, she thought to herself. Such awful names they are going in for these days. We'd better call him after his father. He was an Akaki, so let his son be an Akaki as well. Akaki Akakievich. That's how it came about. Oh, an amazing story. And finished just at the moment your coat is. But you know what, Akaki Akakievich? For that's what I must make bold to call you now. It won't do. It just won't do. My name? No, no, your coat. I, I've pulled it together, but it's not going to hold together for long. With winter coming on, you're going to have to get a new one. He walked out, shaking his head and looking at his coat vaguely. I wondered if he could see that around the back and over the shoulders, the material was so worn that it was as thin as cheesecloth. Probably not. And he had forgotten to drink his tea. I could see him now lighting his candle and sitting down to gulp some cabbage soup, some beef and onions, tasting nothing. Just as he walked on the street without ever seeing anything. Why did I waste time thinking about him? Because a woman could see how lost he was. And I was sorry for him. He needed a coat, which he would never buy himself. Of course, I didn't know then it was an office joke. Good morning, Your Excellency, Mr. Podochin. Uh, good morning, Ivan Ivanovich. Uh, pray allow me to open your office door for you, Excellency. In a minute. What is that thing that always hangs there? It hangs where? On the coat tree. Oh, that. <laughs> That's Akaki Akakievich's. Dressing gown. <laughs> I fail to see what's so funny. Is what? Well, it's just a little joke here in the office, sir, because of the way it looks. Actually, it's his overcoat. That moth-eaten bunch of rags. <laughs> Where is the Kakovich? Well, he, he's at the... Uh, well, you know, Excellency, he had to uh, leave the room. Why, that thing is an eyesore. We'll have to do something about it. Well, well back to work. And ask Kakakievich to step in and see me when he returns. Come in. Send for me, Your Excellency, Mr. Vodachin, sir. Ah, yes. Well, close the door, man. Oh, yes, sir. And uh, come over here and sit down. Oh, I couldn't. I wouldn't feel right. I just stand, Your Excellency. Well, suit yourself. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's about, uh, how long have you worked here at the department, Akakievich? Oh, dear me, no. I, 
don't think I quite know. Before you took over, Excellency. You've been here that long? Oh, yes. It's strange. I never quite noticed you. Oh, I was here with Director Suslov and Director Carvalho. And... Good heavens. You must have been here at least 20 years. Oh, I suppose that would be it, Excellency. Give or take a year, one or the other. And your title is? I'm a titular counselor, Excellency. Ah, uh, clerk. That's another way of saying it. Your salary? 400 rubles. A year? To be precise, per anno. Good heavens. Uh, who? What do you do? I copy, sir. Copy? Copy. Is that all? Yes, Excellency. Well, uh, perhaps we can find you something a little more, uh, more interesting and challenging. Oh, please don't, Excellency. You are not interested in advancement? Oh, it isn't that. It, it's just that... Uh, that uh... Come on, man. Spit it out. No, no, no. I'm not happy that way. Just copying makes you happy. Oh, yes, Excellency. I love my work. It, it's my whole life. I, I take things home. Extra things from the office to copy. And if there isn't enough work, then often I just copy for my own pleasure. Especially if it's something addressed to someone newly appointed or important personage. I never heard anything like this in my life. And where do you find these uh, uh, precious documents to important personages? Oh, dear, anywhere at all. The, the newspaper, an old book, it doesn't matter. Would that be all, Excellency? Huh? Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. That's uh, oh, it's certainly all about all I can take for one day. Thank you, Excellency. Oh, uh, by the way, about your dressing gown. My, my dressing? Well, I mean that garment hanging out there that pretends to be a coat. Something will simply have to be done about it. I mean, it's falling apart. One can see through it. I can't have it hanging there. Gives the place a bad tone. Doesn't speak well for the department. Yes, Excellency. I, I was thinking of taking it to the tailor for repairing. Repairing? <laughs> if he sticks a needle into it, it'll dissolve into dust. What you want is a new one. Yes, that's it. Fit yourself to a present. Akakievich, you get yourself a new coat. What did the old crab want, Akaki? He, he wants me to get a new coat. <laughs> Is that all? Fine. I think it's a good idea. But I can't afford it. Oh, nonsense. Anyone can afford a new coat. Anyway, you haven't any choice. What do you mean? You don't want to get the sack, do you? Find yourself without a job? Oh, he wouldn't do that. Not, not His Excellency. Not the prince of a man like His Excellency. I, I'll have... Petrovich, the tailor, he'll fix it like you. You better face the truth, Akakievich. Better get a new coat, or you're out. No, no, I, I've been here so long, it's my life. Oh, he wouldn't. He, he knows I work hard. He, he's a kind man. Kind? You could sit here till your whole behind was one big bunion, and all you'd get in reward for your labors would be a badge in your buttonhole. I tell you, you'd better get that coat. I don't have the money. Better get it. Get it from your 70-year-old landlady for a wedding gift. She's rich. What wedding gift? Why, isn't she going to marry you? We're all sure she was sweet on you. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you torment me? So leave me alone. I'm your brother. <laughs> you won't be long if you don't get that overcoat. Get it. <laughs> articulate, incomplete Akaki. A natural butt for jokes. A mouse of a man, too small and harmless to twit and taunt. And yet, by that very token, a ready prey to feed the precarious security of other small men. The coat was a joke. Or was it? I shall return shortly with Act Two. chief clerk in the bureau where Akaki worked didn't think of himself as an unkind man. All he loved was a good joke. And since Akaki was a living joke, he was fair game, wasn't he? Except that today, 
Well, the whole business of the coat had gone maybe too far. It upset Ivan's dinner enough to have him resolve that he wouldn't wait till the next day to reassure Akaki that his job didn't actually depend on him getting a new coat he couldn't afford. He would go to Akaki's lodgings that same night. Yes? Good evening. Uh, you are Mrs. Bushko, the landlady? Yes, but we have no rooms. All filled up. Oh, your pardon. I'm not looking for rooms. I am Ivan Ivanovich Anenkov, Akakievich superior at the bureau. Oh, it is I who must ask your pardon, Excellency. Oh, please enter. Oh, thank you. Uh, but not Excellency, just Counselor. Oh, well, as you prefer, of course. Uh, you wish to see Mr. Bazmachkin? Who? Akaki Akakievich. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I never knew his surname. Uh, uh, could you direct me to his quarters? Oh, he is not in. Devil, you say. I thought he seldom went abroad. That is God's truth, but tonight was special, you see. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, then you know where he's gone? Of course. To Petrovich the tailor. Oh, dear. Uh, would you know why? Well, I am not one to gossip, but yes, I think he has gone about his overcoat. To Petrovich? If you need a new garment, why not? Ah, I suppose, but only if you catch him on church holiday when he's nearly human from drinking corn brandy. Is today a church holiday by chance? No, it is not. So much the worse for Akaki. To face that old one-eyed devil sitting like a pasha cross-legged on his table... We must offer a prayer, for certainly Akaki cannot afford a new coat. Well, then why has he gone to the tailor? To get the old one fixed, one would suppose. Oh, of course. What Akaki really needs is a new coat. Yes. Excuse me, Mrs. Petrovich was busy in the kitchen, so I just walked in. Well, well, you just walked into my workroom. Let's have what you want, quick. It was my overcoat. What overcoat? Uh, this one here. That's an overcoat. Oh, dusty, perhaps, but quite... Well, let me see it. I, I was hoping most of it is still... Uh, I mean, it seems to me it could be just a small job. No. No? It can't be mended. If I can't, nobody can. It's a mess. Yeah, but I thought perhaps some patches. I have patches, plenty of them, but I can't sew them together. The coat is rotten. Touch a needle to it and it falls apart into pieces already. But the pieces, couldn't you just patch them up again? No, no, no. Too far gone. Only one answer for you. What? You must have a new one. Well, if I had a new one, how would I, I, I mean... How much would it cost? Yes. Mm, you can reckon on three fifty ruble notes. Or more. <gasps> One hundred and fifty rubles for an overcoat? Yes, and then it wouldn't be too much to write home about. It should have a fur collar, Martin, and a silk-lined hood, but then we are talking about two hundred or more. Yeah, but if my old one could just be repaired... Don't waste time talking about it. Forget it. You must have a new one. I can't afford a new coal. Somehow you can. In Petersburg, during the white coal season, the days and nights, everyone must. Or else they die. Don't you have any savings? Just my pig bank. Your what? It's a habit, you see. For every ruble I spend, I have this little bank with a slit in the back, and into it I put a half kopeck. I've been doing it most of my life. It must be a very heavy bank and big. No, no, no. Every six months I pull the cork and change the kopecks to silver to put away in my sock. It adds up over the years. To how much? Oh, to, to nothing like the price you ask. Well, how much? Oh, yeah, about 40 rubles. Couldn't you make me one for 40 rubles? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> Am I to starve, too? I told you the price. Yeah, but all those rubles, supposing... Supposing what? Uh, supposing, Mr. Petrovich, I was to give you the 40 rubles I've saved so that we could buy the cloth, and then I was to pay you the rest as soon as I had the money. What are you saying? How could I do such a thing? 
And at the rate you save, how could I wait for the rest of my money? Oh, but I would I, I would change my habit to, to save, you see. Oh. I, I, I could cut down on my spending. No tea in the evening, do without a candle. I, I could do my copying at my landlady's room. I'm sure she'd let me. I, I could walk over the cobblestones on tiptoe to save my shoes. Watch how much laundry... I mean, after I came home, I could take off everything and just wear my dressing robe. Why? Why, if I don't wear my underclothing, it will last longer. I don't even have to eat every night. I, I could pay you off at the rest of the year, maybe even six months, depending on my bonus. Are you mad? What am I to do in the meanwhile? Starve? No, no, no. That, that wouldn't be fair. I tell you what. If you can make the coat for me for, say, 80 rubles, I will give you the 40 and my bonus. And if that isn't enough, my next salary payments. I will starve if I have to. Oh, oh, oh me. I must have my overcoat. <laughs> Uh, think about it. But let me tell you one thing. Uh, yes? I won't consider it when you come back unless you bring me uh, without my wife seeing you a glass of corn brandy. You sent for me, Excellency? Huh? Oh, yes, yes, uh, Ivanovich, come in. Yes, Excellency. And shut the door. Of course. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the holidays are not so far away. We must prepare the bonus list. Uh, now sit down. Such a pleasure, Excellency. To sit down? Uh, no, sir. I, I was thinking of the list. Oh, oh that, yes, well. <clears throat> it has not been the best of years. There will be some uh, uh, disappointments, no doubt, no doubt. Not anyone to let go, Excellency? Oh, don't be silly, Ivanovich. No one in a government job is ever let go. Unless, of course, the government changes, which uh, doesn't seem likely. Still, some years are, uh, well, uh, uh, forgetting that for the moment. Uh, by the way, what on earth has come over that wretched little Akakiewicz the last few days? I have passed his desk on recent mornings, and, well, I'm quite sure he never did it before, but he's, he, he's humming. Well, yes, that's because, you see, he's happy. Happy? What's he got to be happy about? Why, his overcoat. That dish rag. It's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. That dressing gown, that miserable uh, uh, floor mop. It, it depresses me. I can't stand to look at it hanging there. You won't have to. He is having it altered by a tailor. Ah, yes. Well, that's a relief. I can't have those rags hanging here during the holidays. He'd better fix it by then or winter will be over. Yes, sir. That's not too much to hope, is it? No, no, Excellency. If, if he can afford to pay for it. Petrovich, the tailor, that one I bandit, gives no credit. And without the bonus, oh, Your Excellency will pardon me, but I, I know Akaki is counting on that. The bonus, yes. Uh, well, we, we shall see. But it'll be no more than last year, mind you. No more. And besides, one must wait for the holidays for that. I know Petrovich, Excellency. We'll also have to wait for the coat for that. Cocky again. I just want to see how the overcoat is coming along. Coming along? How could it come along? Have you brought me more money? Oh, no, Mr. Petrovich. I, I've given you all I had to buy the cloth and the lining. You said... I that... know what I said. And I have the cloth here, and it is cut, and the lining, the best calico. That is paid for. But where is the money to pay for the stitching and the sewing and the quilting? Well, if you could just get it ready so when my bonus comes on. No credit. Supposing the bonus doesn't come to Oh, it will. It has to. But if you must, here, I will pay you all I have on account. If you'll only... Oh, please, I want my code. No cash, no code. Oh. Oh, I, I forgot. What? I, I have something for you. A glass of corn brandy, you ask. Why didn't you say sooner, man? Give it here. Hmm. Hmm. Ah. Good, good. Am I 
wife didn't see you bring it. Oh, no, no, no. I waited till she wasn't looking. Nobody notices me much anyway. <laughs> better, better. <laughs> would you... Would you continue? I, I mean, would you consider, you know, to so? I know it is much to ask. If, if only... Come and get it out. Oh. I have it all day. Well, would you... Continue to sow if I brought you some corn brandy each time I came. Mm. Say, three times a week, supposedly for a fitting, until I could pay you the, the whole price. Kaki, Kaki, it's the first sensible thing I ever heard you say. Perhaps I am foolish, but a man can be a dolt and still be honest. Once in my life I could trust someone, no? <laughs> the brandy is warm in my belly. Why not? What is one coat? He will have to pay to get it. He has the money. All men are liars. And after all, what a fuss about one coat. <laughs> you would think his life depended on it. <laughs> Foreboding statement. If Petrovich the tailor only knew it, as if his life depended on it. For you can see, perhaps it does. The coat has become a cocky, and a cocky the coat. In his preoccupation, it has become his life. I shall return shortly with Act Three. Akaki has subsisted almost literally on peasant bread and water. His samovar simmers no more. Meat is a dream of the past. And only an occasional bowl of cabbage soup gives him energy to continue. The only force that keeps him going is his dream of the overcoat, which is slowly taking shape on the table of Petrovich the tailor. Akaki is deeply in debt to his landlady, which necessitates his sneaking in and out of the house till... This time, he's caught. Oh, there you are. I've been trying to catch you for weeks, just sneaking in and out. And... If it's about the rent. Oh, about the rent, perhaps, but not altogether. I'm only waiting for the bonus. And... All right, the rent, let us put aside. Twenty years you paid me steady every month. Is a person to have no concern for another person? Sometimes we must take things on trust. Madame Bushko. Please believe me. Somehow I will catch up. Oh, so you will catch up, maybe. I wouldn't drop dead. What worries me more, you could. Excuse me? Now, don't try to fool your landlady. You don't eat anymore. Oh, that's by choice. For my health. For my health. Some business concern. And as to the rent, you need have no worries. Oh, the rent I worry about. A woman widowed all alone. Why not? But... It is not that. It's you, Akaki. Come, I will make you a good meal and we'll talk. Oh, not tonight, Madame Mushko. I'm due at Petrovich the tailor. The overcoat. I have the money, Petrovich. The money. And the uh, brandy. The more? Oh, 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 yes, here. <laughs> then we can really celebrate. And I will bring you the coat first thing in the morning. Okay. Only the collar is left to finish. Could it be Martin? Uh, let us not reach too far, Akaki, at these prices. Uh, but I have something no one will ever know from the real thing. See? Cat fur. Cat fur? Mm -hmm. You cat fur? Mm -hmm. oh, you feel so soft. So rich. You uh, shall have the coat complete with the collar first thing tomorrow. Well, what is going on here? What is all the excitement? Back to work. Uh, yes, yes, Excellency. Uh, we're sorry if we disturb you. It's Akaki Akaki. Oh, what about him? For once in the year, we're all rich. And Akaki has used his bonus to throw away the old dressing gown and have himself made a new overcoat. <laughs> oh, no. You, Kakievich, 
Let me see. No, is it not a work of art, Excellency? Mm. You see, here, the seam. And the collar. What fur would you guess? And the lining? Quilted. Yeah, and all this fuss about an overcoat. What kind of a government bureau is this that it can waste its time and trifles? That's a very nice cartridge. And don't let me ever see that old one. As for the rest of you, back to the important work that must be done. Important work. That is to laugh. Why? Isn't that what we do? Processing papers. <laughs> Duplicating what six to ten other clerks do just as well. It's a living. What else? The only thing that makes it bearable are what few occasions we have for a holiday. And now, we have occasion for another. Oh, but we just had one. A khaki's holiday. You finally got your coat. Aren't you going to give a party because of that? A party? But, the, but you... Don't you think he should? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. sure. Don't you <laughs> but I don't have any money left. Everything I had went for this. Well, then I shall give the party. Everyone to my house tonight to celebrate Akaki and his new coat. Oh, <laughs> Come, Akaki. You join the rest of us. Oh, I'm not much for dancing. Well, then you can drink. Huh? Yeah, I'm not much for drinking. Makes me dizzy. Oh, tonight you should be dizzy. You drink the vodka here. Oh, I'm, I'm afraid to. It's such a long way home. You, will you have your overcoat to keep you warm? Uh, must you... Cradle it in your lap as if someone was going to take it from you? I, I was just feeling the fur. Cat fur. Let your hand see how smooth. Ah, you let your throat feel how smooth is this vodka. Drink up and join the rest of us. It, it, hey! Let's drink to Akaki Akakirich and his coat with a soft fur car. It was the greatest moment of my life. But they shouldn't have let me drink so much. Or I shouldn't have, because now I'm stumbling through the white mist of a Petersburg night. It is cold. Numbing cold. But inside my overcoat, I'm warm for the first time in my life. Through the drifting snow, I can see someone now. And also for the first time in my life, I am at peace with my fellow man. I can summon up enough resolve to ask this person where I am. Except that I misjudge a little and bump into it. All right, cousin. Isn't the pavement wide enough without you having to crawl up my nose? I'm sorry I didn't see you were taking snow. Uh, what else to keep the nose freezing against the cold? The mm, best thing is an overcoat. <laughs> Good night, kind sir. Hold a minute. And, uh, an overcoat, you said. Did I? Just a manner of speaking, expression. Oh, but, cousin, I understand. That's a handsome overcoat you're wearing. Oh, you like it? More and more, since we're alone. You'd be surprised how much, for it is about to become what I see. Yes, yeah, 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 what? My <laughs> overcoat. Now, give it to me. Oh. Preserve us. What is amiss at this time of night? I've been robbed. Oh. He, he, took, he took my overcoat. Come in first. Come in by my fire and talk. Now, what happened? Well, he, a man, he came out of the Petersburg mist and he tore my overcoat, my lovely overcoat, my, my beautiful overcoat from my shoulder. Help! Help! No need to cry for help. Now, who was the man? I don't know. Then we must find out. How? You must go to the police. The police? What attention would they give to me? Just a lonely clerk. They would make a, a deposition and that would be it. If you just went into the station. But that is no way to do it. Well, how else? Don't waste your time below. You must go to an important person. An important person? But who? Oh, a police inspector, perhaps. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's a good idea. But not any police inspector. Yes, of course. The, the district one. No, no. The Inspector General. The most important personage is always the answer, whether you can reach him or not. And if you do, remember, he is your servant. The Inspector General is my servant. What is a government for? I don't know. It has to be for something. All I know is, when you have to deal with it, never start from the bottom. 
start from the top. Well, this trivial affair should never have come to an important personage like me. But in spite of all, somehow, this hysterical minor servant had broken through and was all over me. He ripped my coat off me, stole my coat, my overcoat. What has that to do with me? I must have it back, all my life savings, still some debt. How is it all to be taken care of? There are channels through which you I go. have no time for channels. I'm freezing to death. May I suggest, if you go to the right department... You, you what department is for freezing to death? About losing everything you ever had. I want justice. I want my overcoat. Your overcoat is one thing. Justice is something else. I can't do anything immediately about your overcoat. But I can set machinery in motion. Will it get me back my overcoat? I don't know. All I can counsel is patience. And I really don't have time to spend with this nonsense. What were you doing out so late on the street? I was coming home from a, a, a friend's a, a party. Aha. Uh -huh. Drunk, no doubt. Well, that in itself is not a crime, but... No, 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 please, listen to me. You don't understand. For months, I starved myself to buy this overcoat. And the very first day I wore it was stolen from me. By your carelessness in being abroad so late. Because it was a party. We are wasting time. Now, let me suggest the proper channels. First, you must make out a report, longhand, in triplicate, to be presented to the proper... Looking back on it, I suppose we were all to blame somewhere. Oh, Akaki came back for a few days to the bureau wearing the old dressing gown in the dead of winter, feverish, refusing to talk to anyone. Well, this is life. We had our own problems and no time for his. Till suddenly, he didn't show up for three days. And I had to go around to his lodgings to check on him. I got there in the nick of time. That is, if I wanted to catch him still alive. Oh, I'm glad you came, Excellency. Counselor. Counselor. I I've sent for the priest. I think he's an extremist. Not that bad. You know our Petersburg. Without protection this time of year, the cold gets in the lungs and... Well, there it is. He is dying. You wish to go in and see him? Oh, thank you, madame. I will. Akaki? Oh, who's there? Who's there? Ivan Ivanovich. Come to see you. Then I'm dying. No. No! If anyone comes to see me, Away from the office, I am dying. Now, uh, Akaki... It doesn't matter. But where? Where is my overcoat? Your coat? Well, now as to that, I, I don't know. Uh, until I find it, I will never, never... Never what? Die. Never, never die. They left it all to me, of course, the men. After he died, no one cared all that much. I have to admit, not even myself. He was there for a while, and suddenly he was gone. So many people in the world like that. But not Akaki. Not so easily. For most of us, it was only a note in the paper. But for the important personage, it meant a good deal more. Where the devil you say, the... Where the Clinton Bridge ripped the overcoat off the man and faded away into the mist, eh? Well, don't worry. We shall take steps. And you, an officer of the law, are trying to tell me this specter tried to snatch the coat off your back? Well, that's how it seemed, General. But you fought him back? In a manner of speaking, you might say. Well, what does that mean? Uh, well, he 
caught me in the cold and the mist and all. And you see, just at that moment, I was taking a pinch of snuff and... And in the middle of it, I had to sneeze. And after I did, he was gone. Like I'd blown him clear into the neighbor river. He just up and disappeared. I do wish I could say that that had been the last of Akaki Akakievich. But between you and me, I can't. I have a sweet little bundle the other side of town. Karolina Ivanovna, who holds my hand and makes me feel young again. Uh, but I will never go near Karolina again. Just last night, crossing the Abukhov Bridge... He came at me out of the mist, and before I knew it... My overcoat! My overcoat! Since you would not find it, I found it for myself. It was over an hour and a half before I got home to bed, frozen stiff. And for almost a week, I had stayed there wetting out the pneumonia it brought on me and the memory of that ghost. Yes, but I, I must say he seems to be satisfied. My coat evidently fitted. For uh, we have heard no more, any of us, from the ghost of Akaki Akakievich. Oh, there are still stories legends die hard. That Akaki roams the streets of St. Petersburg, snatching at people's coats to keep him warm through the wet and misty winter. But gradually they died out. Not surprising. The city became Petrograd, and then Leningrad. Different times, different cultures. And although it is still possible to freeze to death in Leningrad, they are not the same people for Akaki to haunt. So, maybe he does... Rest in peace. I shall be back shortly. It is an interesting footnote that the overcoat within our time was taken up by the Soviets as the fountainhead of social sympathetic writing. I prefer to think of it as a little more universal than that. Whatever status symbols we achieve through things are transitory. Whatever we gain in life, or for that matter in death, lasts only in proportion to whatever we have to give, emotionally, intellectually, spiritually. Our cast included Hans Conried, Bryna Rayburn, Ian Martin, Bob Dryden, and Leon Janney. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. The drink tastes awful, but I try to finish it. Thoughts of Helen dart in and out of my brain, little flashes of piercing light gone before I can identify them. Helen's face when I met her. So young, just 18. Helen's face twisted with pain later on. I hear her screaming at me and me screaming back. But that was all a long time ago. And now I'm sitting in this bar with this drink. Well, I'm not much good with people these days. Want me to leave you alone? No, 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 no. I appreciate, uh... Uh, give me another drink, will you? You sure about that? Yeah, I think so. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.